All right, guys, so on the right, you see my Instapot Duo, which they call a multi-use pressure cooker, and it's the six-quart capacity. And on the left side of that, you see the uh, Instant Pot air fryer lid, which allows the uh, Instapot on the right to become a air fryer. And it really works great. I think I bought that a couple years ago for about $80. Not sure what they go for now, that lid. And it works great because I've got one base unit that you see here that can do two, two things. So I kind of like that and it's nice and small. So here guys, you see the Instapot with the air fryer accessory lid on it. To the left is the uh, stainless steel inner pot that comes with the original Instapot and that's what you would put your food in. Now when you buy the uh, Instapot air fryer lid accessory for it, you get one of the items you get that you is what you see here. It's called their multi-level air fryer basket. And that consists of the basket and a basket base which simply snaps on the bottom now this air fryer uh, basket uh, base would set into the stainless steel inner pot and when it does that this base has these legs that keep it off the uh, stainless steel inner pot by nine sixteenths of an inch all right so here you see the stainless steel inner pot that came with the original instapot and again when I bought the uh, accessory air fryer lid then and when you got this um, uh, multi-level air fryer basket they want you to take that and put it inside just like that and then that allows you to do your air frying inside this that you can now when you're done pull this out with whatever you've air fried. You'll note that on the base of that uh, air fryer basket we have a multitude of slots, arcs that allow whatever's in here to for the air to surround up through the bottom and then also any grease or whatever that would drain, drip down and then go into your uh, stainless steel inner pot now for me the issue is this basket for me I don't know over time it just gets hard to clean and um, I wanted to try to do something to see if I couldn't replace this with a stainless steel basket. And I, I did some research. I couldn't find anything that uh, was like this. That this is basically all I could find. Well, then I got to thinking <clears throat> they make a three six and eight quart instant pot so went uh, in and looked at what is the size of the three quart uh, stainless steel inner pot and I found that it would easily fit into the original six quart stainless steel inner pot so off Amazon I bought this three quart that you see here it was like $24.95 here you see the original six quart on the left, the three quart on the right. And so this fits perfectly inside of the six quart stainless steel pot. So you probably already know where I'm going with this. I'm going to try to take the three quart stainless steel pot 
and somewhat mimic what this base unit or, or what this uh, liner does and now have something in stainless which is so much easier to clean uh, and so let's see what I'm gonna do here and by the way I didn't mention it earlier this uh, air fryer lid uh, accessory is made just for the six quart instant pot so what I need to do now guys is I want to take and make three feet on the bottom of this drill holes 120 degrees apart so that I have it as a standoff to mimic again the other uh, basket and then that way this will stand off the bottom of the other stainless steel uh, basket and then I've got to drill because I'm not going to make those arcs uh, those were all stamped out in that other thing so here then I'm going to just drill a multitude of holes in the bottom so let's get the next step was to lay this out for my three uh, feet and you want those 120 degrees apart 360 degrees in a circle divided by three is 120 and so you see there's going to be one two three these are anywhere within this line is where I could put a foot uh, uh, for a standoff and we'd be evenly spaced and to accomplish that I use this simple tool right here had this thing for eons it's a center square from Stanley and it is their number 43-101 or I'm sorry 46 yep it's their 46101 center square and uh, the way it simply works depending on the size of your uh, what you're trying to get the center on it'll either hit off of this point or this point obviously with this big pot it hit on the back side that you can see here so when you put that up there it automatically centers itself and then that's how I made marks coming across here to find those points to get my 120 degree spacings, I use this little item here. You can use any kind of a compass. I just happen to have this. And then once I had my one leg drawn, then I just went 120 degrees. And uh, using this thing, very simple. All right, guys, there's been a change in plans. When I tried the 3 high-speed steel drill bit, it didn't do anything. It just put a indentation in it. I even went out and bought some 3 16 stainless steel drill bits. Neither one of them would work. So I ended up thinking about a carbide end mill. And I happened to find, I have uh, in my collection, a quarter inch ball end mill. And so I gave that a try and I got two holes started. I'm going to go ahead and drill my... Uh, do my second one here and I'll show you how I did that but this must be some hardened alloy and um, so that worked good so instead of the 3 16 that I was going to use quarter 20 is fine too to put my three bolts in so it stands off of the six quart pot here you see that uh, quarter inch carbide ball end mill and what I like about this is when it enters into the workpiece it's rounded at the bottom so it should cut in better than a flat bottom cutting end mill all right here you see the one I just drilled this is what it looks like from the side that you drilled from right here it leaves up a little burr but we'll take care of that and on the inside it also brought up a burr But we'll take care of that now the way we're going to handle that burr is with a countersink and I have found that even though it's just a normal countersink it takes that burr off it's just getting that hole drilled so And 
and that's good. And then we'll go to the bottom. And that is good. So let me show you how I'm going to do. I'll do the center one here and I'll show you how this goes. This will tend to want to walk. So you kind of just have to get it there and hold the, the uh, uh, basket here. But you'll see how it goes. Definitely got to have a drill press for this. So there it started. And again, the rest of these holes, none of them are critical. I wanted about 120 degrees for the outside three, for the bolts, for the leg standoff. But the rest of these I'm not I'm gonna try to get you know in a nice spacing but and again I'm, I'm not even using any coolant There it is. Relatively simple with the carbide ball end mill. So if you decide to try something like this, these aren't that expensive. You can buy one of these, put them in a drill press. Got to have a drill press. So let, I'm going to go ahead, deburr this, and put in the rest of the holes. All right, guys, I did decide to use some cutting oil. I just used this Tap Magic. Uh, it worked a lot better that way, and uh, it cut a little quicker. The tool held up great though, and uh, periodically just wipe off any chips that would collect around the flutes. And uh, so that worked great, but you definitely got to have a drill press. It may walk a little bit. You'll see the holes aren't perfect. It's no big deal. Uh, hopefully it'll work the way I've got it. Okay guys, here you see the job completed. There's all the holes. I'm not going to put any more in. You see the three feet. Here's the inside. Everything's been deburred. Then what I did is I wiped everything down. Then I took uh, lacquer thinner on a paper towels, wiped everything down on the inside and outside, used it several times, or did several applications to uh, make sure I got all the uh, cutting oil off, any chips. Then I took a five gallon bucket soap of us uh, a soap soapy solution rinsed it down really good washed it out then I took on the bottom of this just to kind of buff it up I took some scotch bright and just kind of buffed it up like you see here nothing uh, nothing too particular so let's take a look at what I used for the standoffs now they're quarter 20 it's quarter inch diameter, 20 threads per inch, 5 eighths inches long. These are all stainless steel fasteners. Then I put a standard quarter inch nut and then crank that down real tight. Then I topped it off with a cap nut. So a cap nut, if you just had the nut, you'd have the uh, flat surface of the nut, which could scratch. So this is, is nice and domed and smooth. So those are acorn nuts. Then uh, put, finish it off with that, crank those down, and you've got it. And here you see what I'm talking about. You'll see at the very bottom is the quarter inch nut, stainless steel. And then here is your quarter inch acorn nut. And you see how nice and smooth that is? That finishes that off very nicely. Here you see the head of that bolt in there. As I shine, now that's, that's an Allen head, so you need an Allen wrench. And it's a button head, so it's a smooth, round, button head, socket head, cap screw. Now, just in case someone says, well, these bolts 
are an area to collect food and hard to clean because um, again you're going to have the recess there of the uh, Allen head but <clears throat> I don't think that's going to be a problem because when I'm done I clean this off right away so I would pull this out put it in my uh, sink with soapy hot water and I clean it out right away so I don't think that's going to be a problem myself and same for the bottom so that's what I'm going to do that's how I've always cleaned them anyways when I was done so but I thought I'd bring that up because somebody might say that and here you see the record in there how nice it moves around now you wouldn't have that if you didn't use those acorn nuts if you just use the bolt the base of the bolt it wouldn't be nice and smooth like that those acorn nuts being rounded make it a whole lot nicer okay guys you'll notice since this stainless steel pot is going to be replacing the steamer pot that I got with the air fryer head you'll see that this is dished down so it's actually when this is flipped over any grease will go towards the edges and I'm hoping that it'll run out of these holes uh, any excess some might stay in there but so that's why I concentrated most of them here put some here in the center but that way when you're air frying the air will go not only around the outsides of this because there's a, a, a gap around it between the three quart and the six quart you're going to have the air that goes around the outside down the bottom up through the bottom and then also through the top so I'm hoping that this does the trick but I just wanted to show you so that's my thought here is that's why I put more here I don't know if I'll need to put more in but we'll do a test all right guys I've got some Orida fries here in the basket and we're going to give this thing a try alright guys we're going to load the fries the three quart into the six quart pan that we have in there and and, and this three quart that I just re modified that's going to act as the old air fryer pan that I showed in the beginning of the video that I don't like. So that's on there like that. I'm going to hit air fry. Let me set the temperature or the time. 20 minutes. And start. So now it's going to go through a warm-up period. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see how these turn out. The temperature is set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so they just got done with the air fryer. Now it's into a cool mode. As soon as the cool, as soon as this shuts off, it'll have cooled the um, the head unit, and we will check out the fries. Okay, the cool down cycle just ended. Let me unplug that. And we will take out the fries. Oh yeah, nice and golden. Nice and crisp. Okay guys, those fries are nice and crispy. They turned out great. take a look inside that unit and see what that looks like
And as you can see what I was talking about earlier when I said that this basket has plenty of room for air to go around the sides and then up through the bottom and obviously the top down through the bottom and around the sides. And what I like about an air fryer is you don't get all that grease. So it gets your food nice and crispy but you don't get the grease with it. And I do want to say that I tried this without the holes and the same time period, the same temperature, and it did not get them crispy like this. So those holes do help. And this basket should be a whole lot nicer because it's going to be easier to clean than the original basket that I showed. Okay, I've taken the three quart pan out. So here's what we've got now in here with the uh, six quart. So now I'll just take and clean this out. I've got the three quart soaking right now. I'll wipe that out and this will make it so much easier to clean. Well guys, I've got to say I'm real happy with this conversion I did. This is so much better. This pot is so much better to use, the stainless steel, than the metal one that they gave me with the um, air fryer lid attachment that I bought for this Instapot. And so this three quart, uh, I think I paid $24.95 off Amazon. And the hardest part or the biggest thing that you've got to do is you've got to have a drill press and a quarter inch diameter ball end mill. And it has to be a carbide ball end mill. And it will easily drill these out. So if that's something you're thinking about doing, I've just shown it can be done. And um, I'm happy with it.